What's the problem? There is no problem. But you were saying there was a problem. Well, there was a problem, but then I realized the problem was in my attitude. Nice. Real nice. Real, real nice. Nice. Real nice. Real nice. Nice. Real. God damn it, stop. Being able to say, I told you so, feels so good, doesn't it? Nicholas would certainly say so. Sometimes you're just right, and they're just wrong. And when you want everyone to know what that really tastes like, it's time to pop open a bottle of Chateau de I fucking told you so, you fucking moron. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's quite orgasmic, but it's, you can't help but feel smug. And who doesn't love feeling smug? You certainly do. I sure as fuck do. I am a smug and petty bitch. Gotta agree with that. Right? A shin show. A shin show. A shin show. <laughs> A shin show. A shin show. Did you know that Joe Biden's middle name is Robinette? Are you aware of that? Robinette? Yeah. Like a marionette, but a Robinette? Yeah. Okay. What were you smoking, Joe Biden's parents? I don't know what's wrong with it, but I'm not sure I like it. Why is it darkness? (laughs) Yeah, it's a little creepy what's happening right now in the abode of Nicola Shin. You know, I don't mind being in darkness. It's good for you. Is it good for your skin? People should spend more time in darkness, whatever that means. If you have to put newspapers on your windows, you know, sometimes closing the blinds isn't enough. I know that that's true. Sometimes you're right. Foil is necessary to be placed on the windows in order to minimize the radiation from the CIA and other government agencies that's being beamed into your head in order to program you and make you kill people. Now, the foil goes also works good on the head, so that way... Harrison Ford can't shoot irradiating mercury into your testicles through a secret CIA gun. And the foil on your head keeps your testicles safe how? Because it blocks the beam, the the mercury beam that Harrison Ford is using. So the foil exerts like a force field. No, it's just like, you know how when you're under uh, copper, your signal doesn't work? When you're within a Faraday cage, yes. But are you in a fucking aluminum bubble? I mean, if you care enough. I don't think that having a foil hat is going to protect your testicles no, at all. No, you don't put the foil. <laughs> a foil hat is just mainly for to let everyone know visually that you're serious about keeping yourself safe. What you do is you put the foil in all the windows, the walls, give your house a coating of, of aluminum foil. That makes sense. Yeah. You could also make a bodysuit. Which I have. You could make just a jock strap lined with foil. Well, I've done that too. Okay. Well, then you're good, man. <laughs> I've done a lot of foil-based arts and crafts. Now, the foil underwear is for your enjoyment and comfort more than anything else, though, right? Yeah, the way that the sharp edges of the foil cuts into your genitalia as you, you know, move pinch, around. Pinch, pinch, really. Pinch and not cut, but serrate a little right. bit on, on a small level. Micro serration. Yeah, that gives you the pep you need in your step. It's like wearing a hair shirt, only it's an aluminum foil jock strap. And again, the important thing is that it protects your testicles from the beam of mercury being shot by Harrison Ford at the behest of CIA into your testicles in order to control your mind. That's right, you've got to be careful and wear as much aluminum underwear as you can. This has been a PSA. A PSA. You know what? I watched a documentary before I came over here. On what? It's called Manufacturing Ignorance. About propaganda? Uh, Well, you could say that. It's just like... And this basically started with tobacco companies, but it's a problem that happens in tobacco, in pesticides, in global warming, in any like propaganda. But there's a specific flavor of propaganda. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just misinformation. Tobacco yeah. companies figured out in like the 50s or 60s or whatever that you can manufacture ignorance. Isn't that the entire plot of Mad Men? Uh, no, there's more fucking than that. Yeah, there's <laughs> so more much more fucking. fucking. So there's more stealing identities. They have a big account with a tobacco company, but it's I mean, the point of the documentary (laughs) is, is I always assumed that ignorance was just people are stupid and they don't seek out the facts. But it's difficult when the facts are purposefully obscured. Well, yeah. So, like, for example, when neonicotinoids, which I did a report on this in my fucking botany class a century ago, but neonicotinoids were put in insecticides. In the early 2000s, late 90s, as a super effective, super safe killer of non-desirable bugs on your crops and shit, 
And then in Greece, in northern Greece, they started noticing like that just millions and millions of bees were dying. Oh. You know, they would there would be cameras and you would think it's the ground and they reach their hand into the ground and it's just carpets of dead bees. They got trash bags of dead bees and they're like, what the fuck? All next to their hives. You know, the first instinct was maybe it's these new insecticides that they're using. That yeah. That's probably what's wrong. So these insecticide companies hired teams and teams and teams of scientists, experts, not yeah. unbiased, but like they put quite a bit of funding into this to instead do research on all the other reasons why bees might be dying. Territory loss, you know, natural habitat destruction, global warming, disease, anything, viruses, anything, anything besides. But. Yeah. So that way it's hard for you to tell, like, when you have all these very scientific peer reviewed things that say we, you know, we can't determine if this is the cause you have so many of them, you know, it obfuscates yeah. the, the fucking clear culprit, which was neonicotinoids, which now everybody knows, but back then that's how they obscure things. Yeah. It's like a black hole, you know, what you're talking about is colony collapse disorder. And that's been a thing for the last 20 years. It's not just neonicotinoids that are at issue though. I just saw recently that, Roundup ready. We've sprayed billions of tons of Roundup into the environment since 1996. And those billions of tons of Roundup have saved billions of countless tons of other pesticides being applied. But the Roundup is also, it turns out, it mats the hair of bees so they can't fly and they die. And it's another cause of colony collapse disorder, apparently, is Roundup too. So you know, our modern agricultural practices come with a price. They feed 8 billion people, but they come with a price. And, of course, we can't feed anybody without honeybees, without pollinators. So it's a serious issue. So are you saying that I was right those many pods ago when I blamed Monsanto and Roundup Ready for a great number of our ills in society at the moment? You were so, right. So it's, I was correct. They're yeah. killing the honeybees, which will kill us all. Yeah. I, yeah hold on. Hold on. That's really neither here nor there. That's just one example, the whole bee thing. But really, it was the tobacco companies that figured it out. And in 1994, a whistleblower working for what is collectively known as Big Tobacco, all the heads of all the tobacco companies, yeah. who had a meeting in New York and was like, look, you know, we uh, had our scientists look and see if smoking tobacco is dangerous. And uh, it is. It, it definitely causes lung cancer. So what do we do? Because we can't we can't lie. We, we got to figure something out. And in these documents that this whistleblower for one of these tobacco companies sent to the University of San Francisco in 1994, okay. there was thousands of pages where big tobacco executives were speaking very frankly to one another about how yeah, are we going to control the situation? Yeah, this shit gives you cancer. How do we figure we got to, you know, we got to yeah. do something. So that's going to hurt our profit margins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all the while, like this, you know, t tobacco 70 years later, it's still going strong. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and they're just getting gobs and gobs of money from all this. But here's a direct quote from one of those papers that the fucking whistleblower sent to this professor whose name I don't know in the University of San Francisco. It said one of these executives was like, doubt is our product. We have to manufacture doubt because that's the yeah. only weapon that we have against a body of fact. Big Tobacco got the ball yeah. rolling and all these companies figured out a way like, you know, the scientific process is what you use to determine the nature of the world that we live in. And doubt is an important part of the scientific process. But there are two different kinds of science. You know, there's science that is still doubted and science that is not. We right, know that right, the earth right. is round. We don't doubt that the earth is round anymore. We know that the, <laughs> some people do. Yeah, no, flat that's... earthers, hello. Okay, well, <laughs> why do you think that is? Why do you think that like suddenly all, you know, people are being convinced that the earth is flat? I'll yeah, tell you know? why I think that is. I think it's because frankly, people don't know what's true and what's false. And it's right. in Which large what measure, I'm I agree with you. There are people whose job it is to manufacture illusion. And in fact, we live in a world of illusion. This is why I believe in the Buddha. Always with the Buddha shit. That has nothing <laughs> to do with this. The point is, you know that misinformation campaigns are a thing. I mean, that's not yeah. new. But these corporations in modern day America have figured out how to use science against itself, how to fight you fire know, it's, with fire. It's really, it's like the tip of the iceberg type thing, right? Like you don't realize how deeply rooted our society is in the misinformation. You don't realize how far reaching the misinformation campaigns are until you start digging. Yeah, to the point now where there's a new field of study being finally taken serious called antology. 
Antology is the study of ignorance. I would love that, dude. Yeah, That's I know. It awesome. sounds really fucking cool. I want to go get a degree in that. I thought oh, yeah. Antology would be the study of ants. Oh, yeah. The point is, is that you you now have to have a field of study to fully understand the scope at which these, misinformation has, yeah. has harmed. And it's not an accident. Like, it's a very no. calculated using science against itself campaign that has been perfected over the last 70 years. It comes part and parcel with the digital age, right? So tobacco companies, they released all these studies trying to link things to lung cancer. There was, you know, things in the paper where bald men are less likely to have lung cancer. Maybe being born in the month of March increases your likelihood of having lung cancer. Do you think all of these studies funded in copious amounts by tobacco companies and these independent researchers are like, we are literally just trying to find the answer to this question. You know, they're doing their job, right. but it's just you, you know, you muddy. There's one there's yeah. clearly one suspect one guilty yeah. thing in this whole equation and the way you get people to not know what the guilty thing is you through know, a smoke screen yeah it's you a smoke screen you just do a whole bunch of studies because science is the great arbiter by which we decide what's right. true and what's false you use this that is, against itself this is why i think truth literacy you well, know how listen, i'm always telling you to check your sources and so I, I understand and your sources I, might be right though they don't know it's but it's part of that right because like who funded the study big tobacco exactly, exactly. and that's not always made clear either who well, who funded what study this thing you're suggesting truth literacy i mean there's it's only, difficult yeah i mean it's kind of impossible because these companies they have resources you simply don't have well they no just, no no you just need to get the degree in the new field that's coming out, right? And, and well, then, and then you alone yeah, will be able. That just shows to, you be what able the problem to. is. That just now you see what the problem is. Yeah. That you're still very far. It's impossible to fix. How do you fix it's that? not. Nothing is impossible. You you are very. You're always very quick to say this is fucked. It's never going to be fixed because like, all these things that I say have been just, fucked and have yet to be even for, close to sure, unfucked. But that doesn't mean that they're never going to be unfucked. Well, you know, you're right. I don't have the ability to look into the future and guarantee that it's going to be unfucked or that it's going to be fucked. But look, you just, you base the future on people's past actions. And as right. long as humankind has the ability to lie behind closed doors, they're going to do it. They're and just going to do it. I agree with that. But I also think that people are damn resourceful. And if somebody gets pissed off enough, they will fucking find a way to ferret out the truth and then and then that get shit, killed that's how that goes that shit gets easier over time as you build upon that knowledge no. that's like the whole thing with the protest that started with occupy wall street which was a joke exactly accomplished absolutely nothing okay but those people learn from that failure okay and we're able to apply it to later protests like against the keystone pipeline and things that are getting which more and more got effective built. and it didn't the okay. Keystone Pipeline didn't get built. Okay, but like your own argument of people are creative when they get mad enough, when they when they put is, their mind to any task, and I'm agreeing with you that yeah. you can ferret out the truth. But you have to understand these executives have this same ability. Right. Like it's the whole cops and robbers thing, how criminals are constantly outsmarting cops and vice versa into the what we have now. It's the constant battle of good versus evil. Yeah, which is not fixable. You can't fix the constant battle of good versus evil, no, which an, is what an, leads me to say it's not going to get it's unfucked. An, it's an entropo in, in, um, entropic yeah, system. Entropic only to the point it terminates in the end of human existence that can't be bred out of some eventually but i don't know the and then man, if it the could, manner of which now you're talking about eugenics being able to breed out the ability no, for someone to no you because you, you went that, there i'm just saying like that's what not you specifically but if you're talking about like how do you get people to stop fucking being greedy liars how you, do you do that that's like an ex, you know you can't just fix that thing. yeah it's an intrinsic value you have to have a society that doesn't reward those values. You need to have a real God. I'm just saying you need to have a Dr. Manhattan type character who comes down and is like, I'm going to vapor. I'm watching. I am <laughs> everywhere at once. I shit you not. And I will vaporize the next motherfucker who acts like an asshole. Period. Until you they're all gone. This is why we have founded the Church of Universal Energy in the Infinite Multiverse. Would you like answers for how to stop evil in your world? Come to the church. We have all of the answers. We will stop all of these problems and life will be wonderful. Somewhere. I was watching some feminist shit earlier and, some you know. Feminist shit. Well, she made good points. But, you know, we live in a patriarchy, which in and of itself values competition, 
values winning in a more maternal feminist society you value community working together all that kind of shit those are kind of masculine and feminine values well i would argue that both those values you listed for both genders are not mutually exclusive if you look at the fucking patriarchy versus the matriarchy the things that define them the are those you big des- things you describe as feminine trying to work together community i value that more than okay then you have more feminist ideals good job yeah. well congratulations You're actually pretty smart for a man. (laughs) Well, we're trying to put these things into boxes like this is feminist or this is. Oh, my. I have this. I have this argument with Murphy all the time. Okay, because it's two sides of a coin, right? Labeling things because you put labels on shit and it helps you identify it. But then you're also pigeonholing people or things or concepts or whatever. And I get that. But it's still a useful concept to have the labels to help get the discussion started and then once you have a more strict definition then you can fucking go off in the weeds in the gray areas and i guess but like in a perfect feminist society like what is the goal what's the end goal that a feminist wants to accomplish in the in the world as much success as possible for as many people as possible it's truly about the greatest good for the greatest number Okay, that's, I'm saying that that is not an intrinsically feminist thing. That's what a good person wants. You are picking apart what the fuck I'm trying to get said before I even get what I get saying said. Okay. It all ties back to the fact that greed is the fucking motivator for our current society. And that's not going to change until we change society. Yeah, okay. Not that power doesn't corrupt women because it still can and does. But women by nature are not as competitive in an aggressive way as men are. So as women attain more power, they tend to just manage that power without having all this angst about who they've got to be fighting with and who they're backstabbing. It's a little less Game of Thronesy when there's more women in more positions of power. Yeah, I just don't think that that's an intrinsically... I've met very, very competitive females. Okay, but your anecdotal evidence is Here's not what it all fucking boils. Well, is not what it, is yours like where is the actual proof oh my that, okay i'll fucking put together a paper for you so that you can fucking figure it out look we're not disagreeing it really what it all boils down to is that men in this species evolved to be bigger and stronger than women right. so we just ran with that it's okay. not right it's <laughs> fucked up but like do you think if it was the other way around like if it was a praying mantis type situation where women are the big strong ones and men are the little guys that it, it would be any different. The gender has nothing to do with it. No, that's not what I'm saying. And like now at this point, because of this genesis of just biological form, it's gotten fucked. We ran with it forever. And now there's all these beliefs and ideals tied into, you know, what a man is and what a woman is and like their place yeah. in society That's all fucked because men have been running the show. I'm not disagreeing with that. But, like, would it be any different if our forms were reversed? We we will never know unless it happens. Do you think, then, we would have had coffee commercials in which it would have been the woman (laughs) saying to the man, This fucking coffee sucks, you prick. Now, if you don't give me a good cup of coffee for my birthday, I'm going to beat you senseless. The boys down at the office make it up on their hot plates, and then they stir it with their dicks. Because I fucking tell them to. They're scared of me. Because I'm bigger and stronger. (laughs) See, that's the the dystopian outcome that would happen if, indeed, women were bigger and stronger than men. (laughs) I like that that's dystopian, given that (laughs) that commercial literally was brought about. It is dystopian, and I'll tell you why, because this is a dystopia, too. We are living right now at the greatest time to be alive in human history. We're on the precipice. We are. This is the greatest time. You wouldn't want to be alive any time before this, except maybe the 50s or the 60s before the war on drugs and, like, we if actually you, had money. And if you were and, white. And, yeah, and so completely let's, normal. Let's, you weren't into anything weird at all yeah, in any way. Let's backtrack a little bit, actually. As, <laughs> for the average human, because white people don't make up the most of the population of humans, do they? Not of no, the most of population so. of humans, just the most of the population of humans in America until about 2040. I know, but I'm saying like, so if we're talking about the average person throughout history, they would not have been white. statistically, they probably wouldn't have been white. The right. average person yeah. uh, out of all the sum total of all humans. Well, uh, actually, yeah. if you consider that around 2.7 billion people or so, 2.8 billion people are Chinese or Indian, I yeah. guess you could say the average person today probably isn't white. And also, you know, there's like a whatever it is, 0.025 percent chance you're related to Genghis Khan because of 
his tomfoolery. Right. So what what are we talking about? We're wrapping this back around. I do agree that this is the best time for the average person in the history of humanity to be alive. But here's my counterpoint is that that's still not good. It's good for you and me, white Americans right now at this very point in time. But like the bar, I'm just saying, was not very high. It wasn't very hard to get above the shit quality of life of most humans ever, always. And also, might I add, because of other humans, 90 percent. There's wild predators that will eat you and your family. That sucks. You know, that's nature. But then other humans, you know, are the cause of all evil. Yep. Yeah. Have you just spent 20 minutes telling me human beings are bad people? Because I I do really. I just want to crush everyone's hope. That's all I want to do. Is that so much to ask? I want everyone to despair because when you finally lose all hope in the black infinite void, you find peace. (laughs) So you're a nihilist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you. There's two flavors of nihilism and your flavor fucking sucks. <laughs> What's the other flavor? I have to Nothing know. matters, bud. Have a good time. That's, not, that is, that's always what I say. You say, what are no, you going to do? Not. Yes, it is. I say, you say, what are you going to do? And I say, watch it burn and do whatever the fuck I want in the meantime. That's what everyone should do. And I've been saying that for a long time. You should do whatever you want, whenever you want. Have I not always said that? You can have nihilism without the despair. That's all I'm saying. I just, you go through the despair and come out the other side with peace. You come out the other side in a fucking Hawaiian shirt with with (laughs) flashing neon sunglasses (laughs) and sipping a pina colada. I have nothing. It's all good. I love it. People, they invest in politics. They think voting for this person or that person is going to, people think things matter that don't matter. You got (laughs) to find your own meaning. They find meaning in attempting to build a better community. Can you really blame them? Well, yeah, if you educate yourself, then you realize like all of this is smoke and mirrors. And then you're like, you could be div- diverting these resources that you're these mental resources you're you're directing towards shit that's not real. It's not real. Local politics are important. True. I guess. Yeah, they're more important than voting for the president. I'll agree with you on that. Voting for your mayor or whatever. Yeah. is more important than voting for the president, because that's all. <laughs> and really, here's where I kind of agree with you where I get probably closest to agreeing with you. And it's like, big picture, you're not going to do shit. Big picture, you're an ant. Okay. And this is right. the existential crisis I had at eight years old. So you you have to stay within your sphere of influence. Which is nothing for me. For which you, is sure. This, which no one listens to. So <laughs> yeah, really no harm, no foul. But wouldn't it annoy you once you realize you're an ant to see other ants walking around saying they're fucking people? No, or because here, here, here's the thing is to each their own, man. You want to be a fucking self-important ant? Okay, that's good for you. I'm going to stay over here with these other ants who know what the fuck their life is. And Are I, you, you know. saying I'm a self-important ant? <laughs> Shoot No. Are right. you saying I'm you're t- not? <laughs> you're just a very loud ant. I am. You know, I just am tired of people having hope. I'm tired. Of Shut it. up. <laughs> Jesus Shut up. Christ. I am. It's Pe- annoying to me. You Why know, do you right. care? I shouldn't care. I shouldn't. And for the most part, I don't. You're I mean, not- I just, it's really just something to talk about on this podcast. When I'm sitting at home, I'm smoking weed and playing video games. That's <laughs> all that's on my mind. Not the unending <laughs> fucking burning of society. I just think you're not a very good nihilist if you give a shit about what other people are thinking. I don't. I just, you know, I need something to talk about when I'm on this fucking thing that no one listens to. But, you know, for the most part in my free time, Except when I'm down the street and I see people like, yeah, vote Hillary, vote Trump, vote Biden. I'm yeah, like, I guess this is annoying to me. These people, Democrat or Republican, they are your masters. They are all of our masters and they do not care about you. They don't. They don't. And they're bad people. They're evil people. They are fucking evil people. They deify them. I'm like, this is why we're never going to crawl out of this shit. It's all going to go downhill. And this is why, because you're fucking dumb. Most of these people, these middle-aged people, they treat it like a fucking pep rally in high school. They don't even care. They don't even know. They're just doing it to do something because they have nothing in their lives. And it's annoying to me. Wow. Speaking of which, did you know that Mitt Romney got booed in Utah? He came (laughs) up on the stage and they booed his ass. They booed him. Mitt Romney's all right, though. He's a good one. I don't know anything about him except that he's from that cult of. I was really afraid of him getting elected in 2008. I can tell you that much. But what would Which been? is weird because he didn't get the nomination until 2012. Whatever. <laughs> would I you, feel if like you had to choose between Romney and Trump. Probably Romney. Yeah. But I mean, he was fucking anti-gay and that scared me when I was still a baby gay. Sure. But now you've worked through it. Like Nick says, what the fuck does it actually matter? Mm, yeah. Nick, you've gotten to her. I'm not getting no, to anybody. I'm just he did it. back the curtain here. It's all. It was always there. 
first of all, don't give him any fucking credit. Second of all, did Why? I? Why did I deserve credit? <laughs> you see, her first thing is just be like, no, fuck this guy. <laughs> Second, did I not say to stay within your sphere of influence? I'm aware that the presidential election is far beyond my sphere of influence. Do I still make everyone vote in it? Yes, because it's the fucking principle of the matter, right? Like, if and you're I gonna still vote local, you right. tell me to do I know. it. And even knowing that it's fucking that is stupid bullshit, and pointless, I, I do know it that. Anyway, just because you me. want me to. Because I'm your sphere of influence, right? And therefore, all the way around, we are well, within each other's sphere of influence. So you do what yeah. I say because you know we have influence on each other. Yeah. Where are we going with this? It's fine. <laughs> no one knows. Do you ever do anything because Nick tells you to? Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. I tell her to lock her fucking doors and she won't do it. I'm like, I, lock your doors. I you do know? about 40% of the time. That's not. Dude, I came downstairs the other morning and the front door was wide open. Yeah, see? There's fucking, don't you remember the <laughs> Night Stalker, which you wouldn't because he was in 1984, but Richard Ramirez, he would just walk into people's houses if they were unlocked. Well, actually, you did it. You would break into. Just lock your doors. That's all I'm saying. I get that. But like. <laughs> A, if somebody wants to actually break in, a locked door is not going to deter them. And B, Fair. I do when I remember. I just don't always remember. That should be like a... I grew up without it. So, so it's a I. lot fucking harder. Yeah, but I'm not nearly as paranoid as you. That's definitely true. When we lived in Kansas City, we locked our doors there, but you didn't really learn from that. We locked our doors in Omaha, too, when we lived in that condo. I didn't live with you, Dad. I've never once lived with you. You lived with me no, on the weekends. That's Didn't not living. Break I into your visited house in Colorado when Sarah was a wee babe. Yeah, that happened, Sarah, when you were a wee babe. Someone broke into the place in which we lived, which was at the time on 14th and Niagara in Denver, Colorado, right off of Colfax Avenue. Had a side window, screen in it, but somebody knocked the screen out, climbed on in. Big fella. Mark. I am not fucking locking my goddamn windows as well as my doors. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with that? Because then every day I have to unlock my windows to open the fucking window. I'm no, not doing it. I'm not doing it. That is literally a half second gesture with your fingers. And yet it fills me with fucking irate rage whenever I go to lift the sash and it doesn't lift. That's only because I suggested it. You know what it is? It's the principle of the matter. It's my fucking house and I shouldn't have to lock the doors. Someone wanting to get up in there is going to say, this is my what? This is my fucking job and I'm going to get up in here and do whatever the fuck I want. No, no it's not. It's nobody's right. job. It is if you're, you know. No, it's that's not a it's, job. It's, that's a crime. If you're the archetypal <laughs> criminal that I am describing in this hypothetical situation. The criminal he, is in the title. It's not a job. Okay, he would okay. say this is. Well, no one would say this, but I'm just saying in a cartoonish, <laughs> exaggerated amalgamation of all burglars, my doors. they would say, if all burglars did the fusion dance into one ultimate burglar, <laughs> he right. would say, this is my job. Okay, whatever. We, is the Hamburglar in on this too? No. He's the groin. <laughs> oh my God. The groin of this fictional super burglar? <laughs> yes. Is, is the Hamburglar. Yes. Why is the Hamburglar stuck in the groin? Why wouldn't he be an armpit or even the face of the so-called master burglar? It's not that important. Actually, all the important burglars are the ones you never heard of. The ones who didn't there get caught. Go. Well, that's true. The ones that didn't get caught. But speaking of the Hamburglar, I had a double quarter pounder with cheese today. God, Fuck that was yeah, good. Dude. How's your heart? Oh, fucking great. It's oiled. Yeah, it's been oiled greased. Up. It's greased up. He How did say better? that. After he finished, he's like, oh, my mouth's got that good grease feel. <laughs> it's going to slide right on out, too. But <laughs> it was delicious. So satisfying. And what we did was we got it out of McDonald's in D.C. And then we walked our asses across the street in front of a nice cream shop. And then I got a double brownie chocolate. There better be a good ending to this story. <laughs> it better be fucking no. good at the end. No, there's not. But your dad had ice cream and it made him happy. A scientific study funded by the McDonald's corporations details that the grease ringed out of a double quarter pounder with cheese actually lubricates your heart to maximum efficiency and beyond. Do you want to be a super soldier in the McDonald's army? McDonald's is proud to announce that they now have the largest freestanding military in the world. Eat our super soldier double McChurglers. <laughs> Eat our food. We'll fucking kill you. I'm loving it. <laughs> da, 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 da. You wrapped up that story real good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I could see where this ambling. <laughs> Once you, you know, knew it was path. going nowhere, you had to take it somewhere. It was... <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm the one that's rambling this podcast oh, for sure. Your dad did fall asleep at one point in time earlier. I'm not going to lie. You need your sleep. <laughs> your brain recharges when you sleep. 
I think it should be mandatory in the United States for everyone to at least try to get 12 hours of sleep a day. <laughs> you do 12 a night, don't you, son? I try to squeeze a tight 12 in. Sometimes I get a good 13, 14. No, nope. 10's about where I'm at. What it is is I think that I sleep 12 hours, but really, like, it's more like eight or nine because I'll, I'll, I'll go to sleep at like four in the morning and then wake up at like noon. You know what? Fuck you. What? I'm still, we're still getting like basically the same amount of Fuck hours of sleep. you. Well, sometimes I do. I had to wake up to get vaccinated at 10. Your life is real tough, honey. <laughs> to real fucking tough. Listen, I live the way I live because I made tough decisions and did tough things to get where I am today, which is not much, but it's just that I can sleep as long as I, I want to punch you in your fucking Don't hate. rabbit beaten heart right Don't now. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I do both. I'm an equal opportunity hater. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. What's the next topic? I'm hitting next. Wait, I did have something. Oh, my God. No, listen, I found it on Reddit, so it's not even a thought out of my own head. So relax. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) The question is, what is a question that you've had your whole life that no one has ever been able to give you a good answer for? Well, my whole life, I always wondered, who am I? It never felt like I knew who I was, ever. This feels like a religious pitch. You're not going to pitch the Buddha to me right now, are you? You better not (laughs) fucking try to baptize us with your Buddhism again. (laughs) I'm not having it. (laughs) We get it. He was great. He was fat. It was awesome. So am I. What's your point? He definitely was not a cult leader and definitely didn't make any money off this fucking thing. He's definitely a good, stand-up, altruistic, transparent guy. All right, Daddy. So what? You did You did some fucking existential theory in your therapy. You, you meditated and what? Did you right, find yeah, out who you are? I'm going to fucking Who, who are you, Daddy? Right now. He found the How the Buddha Do, which is a book by Siddhartha Buddha. And after reading How the Buddha Do, he's like, oh, okay. I get it. I'm Peter Shin. This whole time, I thought maybe I was like Jack or something. I don't know. But now, I mean, there were 11 kids with him growing up. It's it's understandable that he might get a little confused. None of which were named Jack. But did we get it? <laughs> now I'm curious. Did they? Was that it? Let's, yes. Let's listen to him laugh. We just completely called you out. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt. Recently, you discovered the answer to the burning question, who am I? I thought that was pretty funny what you all said. I liked your answers better. What about you, Nick? Or what about you, Elsie? What questions have you had your whole life that have never been satisfactorily answered? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll? Well, I can answer that right now. It's three. That is true. And we can confirm that from an old commercial. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, two, three... No, that's bullshit, because nobody bites into that shit unless you want to break your teeth. I want to break my teeth. I bite into it all the time. Oh, that's true. So, side story. Yesterday, we're on our way to go visit our friends, and your father's driving the D.C. Beltway, and he had purchased a, like, grapefruit-flavored soda. And as he's driving the six-lane Beltway, he's like, honey... I need you to get me one of those grapefruit sodas. And I said, no, we have no way of opening. He's like, I'll I'll open it with my teeth. And I had to tell him that he cannot open a glass bottle with his teeth while driving. That sounds like a loser's point of view, a lose-lose attitude. That's a quitter's attitude. There we go. That's what I meant. Back in my young wild days, I used to drive completely to the moon on acid with one knee whilst rolling a blunt in the dark. Now... Were there some accidents? Yes. Did innocents <laughs> die? Yes. Was it worth it? No. Could you open a glass bottle with your teeth? Could Absolutely I open a glass not. bottle with my teeth? No. Was it a bad idea to try? Yes. Did I lose my teeth? Yes. So the point of the story is Elsie's right. That is the point of the story. Although I do think even though I was doing 75 miles an hour in unbelievable traffic, murderous traffic, I think if she would have just been willing to hand me the fucking bottle, I could have fucking handled it. And oh, by the way, who doesn't have a bottle opener on them at all times? There was some comment about how the girls at the office would have done it with their hot plates. That's right. (laughs) You opened a bottle for me recently with a lighter and that blew my mind. Did it? Um, I told Elsie she could open it with a lighter if she had a lighter. I told her that. She didn't want to fucking hear that. But I had no lighter or bottle opener, so therefore I'm a fucking loser. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, you... opening a bottle with a lighter, according to my boss, Emmett, is uh, who hates the show, by the way. 
he uh, <laughs> came up to me at work, was like, Shindigger, listen to your podcast, could not get into it. I was like, hey, thanks for telling me that. You got any <laughs> feedback? He's like, yeah, you just need someone who's like, uh, says controversial stuff, you know, who like disputes. I'm like, well, I don't know how much you listen to then, man, because that's we are all just constantly disagreeing with each other. Yeah, there's never once been a consensus reached on this podcast. Although... He knows Dave personally. He's like, I got to the point where you were ragging on Dave and that made me laugh. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, that's like a layup. That's an easy. Yeah, it's, an that's easy low hanging fruit. Well, I'm glad he liked us making fun of Dave. Don't be a people pleaser, dad. Yeah, I fuck, yeah, fuck Emmett. Fuck him in his fat, stupid fucking ass. Motherfucker's supposed to be dead three years ago and is still just walking around. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, motherfucker's supposed to be dead right now. And Tyree would be so mad at Emmett. He'd be like, I'm fucking quitting his job. I hate that motherfucker. I'm like, bro, he's, he's a dead dying. man walking. You know, just cut him some slack. But now I'm like, yeah, fuck that fat fuck. For no other reason <laughs> than just fuck him. Thanks, modern medicine. You want to hear the top question? Yeah, I do. Question? Yeah. And I want to hear your question, too. Did you ask one, Elsie? You didn't ask one. I said, how many looks the son of a goddamn tootsie roll pop? That's lame. Well, guess what? I don't really spend my time worrying about things that don't have answers because there are so many other things in my life to deal with that it's just not worth it. Just like you're an eyeless. answers just because they're obscured from you. You know, haven't you ever Mm -hmm. wondered, like, did the American government have any contact with aliens before? I don't know and I don't care. Don't give a fuck. I don't care. Zero fucks. Really? Yeah, yeah, most Americans feel like this that. argument. I've still never evidence. gotten a good answer as to why you don't give a fuck about aliens. Because there's a lot of evidence that we have been contacted by at least technology that we don't understand and that isn't ours. Is it from another world? Well, the only options are another world, China, or Russia. That's it. That's all the options there are. And we don't think it's from China and Russia. What does that mean? Or if it is from China and Russia, they got it from another world. But if you like were out hiking on a vacation in Nevada and you just saw through a chain link fence, Joe Biden shaking hands with an alien coming out of the UFO, you'd be like, that's fucking lame. And keep walking. I've watched X-Files and I want my eggs to stay inside my body. Thank you. That's not an answer to my question. The answer to your question is the same as it is for... It's outside of my sphere of influence. It would not influence my life one way or the other. Therefore, it's hard for me to give a shit. But it has influenced your life. You just don't know it. Sure. Except I already believe that there are societies out there in space other than our own. Sure, so, like, like, don't you want to know, like, what if we, like, had contact with them? Like, found some okay. shit happened in the 50s? Yeah. And then we just never said anything about what it. What the fuck am I going to do about it, bud? No, dude, I'm not asking you what you would do about it. I'm just asking, like, is it... What not- is that knowledge going to serve me? It's just trivia. Don't you like trivia? <laughs> you know? Sure. To Elsie's point, the reason why I haven't given any fucking dedicated time to it is that it will not affect my day to day. So I have other shit to worry about. Look, there are reasons to ponder possibilities other than does it affect my day to day? Does it not entertain you sometimes to just think about how things may or may not be? Like Honestly, what, what the implications of something would be? Not aliens. For me, it's the simulation theory. I mean, that's interesting to me, too. That's also fucking crazy. All of that crazy sci-fi shit that could possibly, there's like a shred that it is true and that it is covered up. I want to know that. I just want to know, what are you going to do with that knowledge? Nothing. But at least you'd know. And that knowledge might open the door to other knowledge. If you know this thing for a fact, then you can use that as a basis to maybe discover some other shit turn into Dr. Manhattan. I just want to turn into Dr. Manhattan. I've longed to witness such an event, and yet I neglect that in human coupling. That's fair. Who doesn't want to turn into him? There's six of them, like, having sex at the same yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's why you'd want to do it. So you could spit roast someone with yourself. Or well, then I just want to be his girlfriend. Yourself. Or you could spit roast your own self with yourself. <laughs> That'd be worth the price of admission for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Spit roasting your own self with yourself. And you might feel a little dirty about it afterwards, but then you're like, well... It's fine, and it's not gay, and I don't need to go to therapy for it. No, not at all. I violated myself. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so oh. here's the top question. And the cool thing about this is that, like, usually there's someone right afterwards who's like, I actually know the answer to this. But here we go. How many generations does it take to disregard incest? Well, at what point does the gene pool diversify? Yeah, how many generations down does it start to dilute enough to make you not fucking have a club foot? Or hemophilia. Whatever the fuck. Or a hair lip. I have the answer, but if you guys want to take a... Uh... Hair lip's a bad deal. I would think that four... 
well now. Four's still a bit close. Depends mm. on the state. I mean, in Alabama, one. <laughs> right. Yeah. In Alabama, none. The first one. Five. Five generations, I would think, that's your, is enough. That's what you think? Yeah. That's your answer? Yeah. Anybody else want to just throw a number out there? Four. You remember that book? It's like Dark Shine or something. Anyway, the whole premise of the story was some Earth people crashed on a distant planet. And the only way to survive was to fuck and then populate that planet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do remember that. I can't remember the name of it either, but it was pretty intense. sounds familiar. That is this concept. And I think the answer was like five. It was like 200 years or something like that. The answer is 20. 20? 20 generations. Okay. For it to flesh out. Wow. No wonder we're fucked up as a people because I think a lot of us are more closely related than that. So what does this mean? That I can't screw my great, 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 great grandkid or what? I'm confused. You definitely should never do that. Yeah, that like you're resetting the clock at that point. If you fuck your own great, no, no. great, 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 only if oh, your family not. inbreeds, right? Yeah, I it guess has not. something to do with diversifying. So if you're marrying outside of the family, yeah. So assuming there's no incest and until you, that point, and you have immortal life for some reason through cybernetic implants or whatever, God help us. I think you could fuck through your the great, 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 great through the Buddha's cybernetic implant. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's true. The, that's the title of this episode. Once you me- yeah, the Buddha's cybernetic implant. Yeah, that should be the title. <laughs> Once you've meditated for 400 days straight, surviving on nothing but your own moisture, the Buddha comes down from Shangri La and instead injects you with a cybernetic implant in your medulla oblongata that allows you to you. fuck your great, 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 great grandchild with no worries about, in- about genetic dysfunction. Wow. That's the real secret of Nirvana. That's, yeah, that's the great truth. That's what everybody, and I already know it, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm just waiting any day now for the Buddha to come down. Oh, and you haven't performed the 400-day meditation. You're right. That's And that's what you, you do have to do that. <laughs> Y'all are assholes. <laughs> what, if the Buddha's such this nice fucking guy, he won't care. He's, he's laughing up there in the golf club in the sky or wherever. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> I don't know the mythology here. There's a wheel. He just croaked. I know on King of the Hill, Bobby is like the next Buddha. And then <laughs> it's like a legit thing. It's like season two. You go tell my boy he's not a llama now. I can't tell him that because it's not up to me. Have you seen Invincible yet? No. Because Bobby Hill's in that. Is he really? Yeah, he's a grown. Well, no, not really. But there's the this voice guy. actor. No, but there's this guy who just looks like Bobby Hill as an adult in a suit. He looks just like him. I'm telling it's, you. It's like the creators wanted you to think that he was Bobby Hill. Yes. OK. <laughs> and then something happens to him. And I'm not going to say Dad, was... how much of that have you watched? I'm on episode five of eight. Yeah, dude, the last episode is so fucking crazy. The Are first there... episode is so crazy, is it not? That scene at the end, right? Well, not just the first episode, but then there's kind of a quasi-similar scene at the end of the fifth episode involving Invincible. With the team of villains there? Exactly, with one of them looks like a Thundercat. Thundercat! Oh! It looks like a Thundercat, and you're like, okay, this is fucking super... Uh generic villain just a lion man with a golden mace you're like okay he's gonna get his shit kicked in and he fucks everyone up badly the end of the season once you finish it you're like this was obviously all just a prologue to set up the real show can't wait for season two and i haven't even (laughs) finished season one yet it's gonna be great we haven't really watched anything this week i don't think have we Watched a couple episodes of Veep, which pleased me. You get to decide which banks to bail out. This is impossible. What would you guys do if you had to choose between your cock and your balls? I could lose them both. I mean, at this stage, they're purely decorative. It's a show that depresses your father because it's too close to what real life was like for him and his last job. But it's it's basically about how fucking insane and stupid and ridiculous and comical that politics really are. With Julia uh, Louis-Dreyfus. Julia yeah. Louis Dreyfus is one of the funniest human beings on earth. But you know, she's a she's multi the girl from Seinfeld, right? She is. She's a multimillionaire many times over. She's an heiress. Oh, before even the acting without the acting shit. She yeah. would have been yep. a multimillionaire. Yeah, which is cool if you think about it. I think I live a charmed life. I was saying today that sometimes I feel like I'm in heaven right now. You know why, Dad? Because you were poor growing up and you escaped poverty. That's all it is. It's all a fucking class war, dude. It's all a fucking class war. For whatever mm. reason it is, it's mm. pretty awesome. I guess. It's awesome to, yeah. It's yeah, good he to won. He won the class war. Why are you mad no, about this? No, he didn't. No, he didn't because he's not a multi million dollar fucking anything. Well, and I'm not. not an heiress.
Chris. He's not Jeff Bezos or Elon Bust. So, yeah, he didn't win. But you bust our balls. You're not going to be in the will. So calm down. <laughs> Jesus. Like, because we're planning on that. So don't no, fuck okay. it up for yourself. First of all, Look, I don't need your charity. How are you going to say that the president meeting aliens is not worth thinking about? <laughs> but <laughs> feeling like you are in heaven is something you need to question and get to the root of. It's not that questioning. That is something where you're like, if you feel like, I feel like I'm in heaven right now. Just leave it at that. Don't think about why that is. Just feel good. Just sit there and feel good. Oh, I'm not capable of that. Well... You're, I'm not capable of sitting and being happy. That's because you uh, get drug tested. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm also Can't very short tempered. The right results. Now. <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> Can't you just hack into the mainframe. That's definitely not how that works. Change the results. Aren't you the person? I could do that for other people, not for myself. Why? Because our drug results don't go through our system. What if you assembled like a team of Ocean's Eleven style hackers? <laughs> Is it really worth it though? <laughs> just to hit a joint yeah. <laughs> might as well do heroin here's at that point. here's what it is is that i will just wait until i can get a medical card for it and then go get a medical card for it i got anxiety Are they still wouldn't your job still be able to say like you still cannot have marijuana in your system to work here they could but if you had a medical card then they wouldn't depends on the employer federal government's not gonna hire you with a medical card okay but i don't work for the federal government okay. and because we had a situation like that arise well then toke up get your card well, i don't dog. have a medical card now do i yeah. Well, they don't have okay. medical marijuana in Nebraska because, as we've discussed previously, it will kill children in Nebraska specifically. Because of the geospatial time warp. But I'm not a child. As a corrections officer in a jail once told me in Utah. So somehow it's geopolitical. We tied <laughs> yeah. to the seventh dimension. Whatever leeway the weed is on, the ley line. The ley line, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Whatever yeah, yeah, ley line yeah. that the weed is on changes its biochemical properties. Right. And if it's in Utah or... If it's in a state where it's not legal to be smoked, it will kill you and that's turn the, you gay That's and black. why it's illegal. Right. In that order, it will kill you, turn you gay, and then turn you black. But right. if you consume it in a state where it is legal, it's fine. Then you feel like you're in heaven. Then you're going <laughs> to want to be gay. No, wait and a minute. Tut, tut. I don't feel like I'm in heaven just because I'm the beneficiary of medical cannabis. No, no. I feel like I'm in hurt. heaven because I have a lovely home. It's beautiful weather. I don't have to go to work. And I still get money. Look, and then on top of look, all that, you can roll up a fatty, smoke some cut. All I'm nice saying, gazebo. I understand that everything's relative, right? I get that. And I am very glad that I didn't have to eat corn for fucking a month straight. Just hamburger, rice, and tomato well, for six months straight. At least we had meat. Meat. I just, I get real torn up about the fucking class divide, man. Like, mm. here's the thing is that, like, I am not middle class. I live a no. nice lifestyle and I'm not middle class. No, middle class is $400,000 and above, right? Right. No, that no. is not true. Yeah, you guys are high. <clears throat> Sarah, you're middle class, especially for Omaha. You and Sarah Murphy make more money than Elsie and I do. You're middle class as fuck. You have a degree. You don't have any college debt. Now, if you had this job, this income in Los Angeles, you'd be poor. San that's Francisco. That's not true. Yeah, it is. If you look at the median income, well, no, that's true. What you said is true, yes. But if you had this job in Los Angeles, though, they would just be paying you more. You would be yeah, adjusted. It's, it's scaled. Yeah. Here's why the median is high and what you're falsely comparing yourself to. Because the 1% has all the fucking money, which drives the median, median way the fuck up. That's true. If there are American citizens with $200 billion, I'm not a mathematician. You kind of are. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's just going to fuck the averages up. That's true. I guess my point is that I just feel like a millionaire. Good. I got everything I'm, good. I'm glad. I got kids who talk to me. I got good food. In fact, I got so much food I can't lose any weight. I got a comfortable existence. I don't have to go to work. Did I mention that? It really is the dream, isn't it? Well, the class divide thing that agitates you. Look, you're mad at basically the same thing that I am. When I say that it annoys me that people have hope in this country, and you're saying that the class divide annoys you. You know, it's basically the same thing. The reason I think that there's no hope in this country is because the people who run shit are these crime families, the Clintons, the Bushes, all of them, the Kennedys, they're crime families that have a shitload of money and influence. Those are two sides of the same coin. The things you and I don't like about this country. That's why we should all move to New Zealand and get our <laughs> fill of Ziff's. That's right, Ziff's. Fine dining in a relaxed continental atmosphere a restaurant we haven't talked about in months, but that we still love, Ziff's, right down there in Invercargill, New Zealand, now COVID-free. 
I hope Ziffs gets burned down to the ground. Fuck Ziffs and their Kiwi fucking asses. Although I did see something, some Kiwi scientists, they're developing a spray, like a surface coating that allegedly eliminates COVID. And will turn you gay and black. Of course. In that order. Yes. (laughs) Will kill you, turn you gay and black in that order. But also cure COVID. No, Pfizer is devising a COVID prevention pill. I'll take that. You take it, what, like once? I don't know. I don't know all the details. But I know this, that the Pfizer vaccine has become the it vaccine. It's become real sexy. Yeah, that's what I got. Got it yesterday. No side effects. Although I did kind of feel a little weird after they shot me with the needle because I went right to work. But it was like fun, though. I was like, I feel like I'm fucked up on some drug I haven't been (laughs) fucked up on before. And I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. Having a good time. I get mine on Wednesday. Your second one? Yep. But you got your first one before I did. But I got Moderna. I had a longer wait. Oh, it has four weeks versus Pfizer? three. Because I didn't. I thought we weren't going to talk about the new class system, which is of which class of vaccine you got. <laughs> because we don't want Sarah to feel like the piece of shit she inevitably is having gotten Moderna when the rest of us have Pfizer. This is the real reason why I feel like I'll never be middle class. <laughs> oh, you're exactly. one of those Modernas, I see. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. To, oh, to accurately answer your question, it was because that was the first appointment that was open. Yeah. And I didn't know about the three versus four week thing. Had I yeah. not gotten my vaccine from Veterans Affairs, I would have gotten it from my county. And my county vaccine would have been Moderna. And I would have gotten my first dose yesterday. But as it stands, I got my second dose of Pfizer 10 days ago. So I'm vaccinated as fuck, dog. And you got yeah. your second shot yesterday. Sarah's about to get her second shot. And then we're all vaccinated, man. That's pretty cool. It's exciting to be vaccinated 16 months into the pandemic. I have dreams about being in crowds of people. And I'm like, I feel guilty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be here. You know, yeah. I don't have a mask and shit. I have dreams about that. Stress dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I woke up last night. I guess this morning, biting my tongue so fucking hard. I was bleeding out of my mouth because I was just biting my tongue in my sleep. Like you were having a seizure? Maybe. I don't know. I just I woke up. And I was like, what the fuck? And the, my tongue was all, I was biting it. I hope that doesn't keep happening. You were biting it because of the stress dream about being in a crowd without a mask? No, I, unrelated. I, yeah, those are unrelated. I've just had dreams before about being in a crowd. But last night, I just woke up with fucking blood coming out of my, like it hurt. You know, I could tell I was biting my tongue. and just shot up because I was doing it in my dream. Nice. Can you yeah, imagine so what metal. would happen if you actually bit your tongue once in a while while you were awake? Yeah, I mean, I've done that several times while I'm chewing on food and I eat fast. No, I was just joking about you shutting your mouth once in a while. Oh, oh we missed that. That was actually that wasn't bad. It was pretty good. <laughs> I'll give that one to you. And I was even too stupid to because I was talking. It was too high. Really wore, yeah, it was too Don't you feel better now that you explained it? Me brain compute. Yeah. You should look at that last joke with a jaundice die. All right, now you took it too far. You had it. It was right there in the palm of your hands. You should have just dropped the mic and walked away right there. Said he dropped the egg on his face. Yeah. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Nick's ascended. (laughs) I am at the pinnacle of human existence. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. A Shin Show is a production of Shinfluence. It features the voices and opinions of the Shin family, which are entirely and exclusively their own. Join us each week on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, as always, to our regular listeners. We love to hear from you. Please email us at ashinshow at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.